Well, we want to welcome you to another uh, episode of Journeys with Jesus. Uh, we're here at Green Hill Church. We want to welcome you to Green Hill Church. I'm Dan Darling, the pastor of Teaching Discipleship, and with me is uh, Casey Coulter, who's uh, our student pastor, and a number of other various and sundry things. Yeah, take care of uh, Next Gen Ministry. It's good to Next Gen Ministry. be uh, with you guys, our uh, Green Hill family, and then those that are just checking up, checking this out off of our YouTube channel. Thanks for hanging with us for a few minutes today. So we we've been. We've had a little break with uh, Journeys with Jesus because of the holidays, um, Christmas and New Year, uh, but we're back here. Uh, and as you know, our, our five things that we talk about are uh, go, God, gather, grow, and give, uh, which are kind of emphasis of our mission. For sure. And um, you know, each of these really speaks to kind of why we're gathered as Christians, what we're doing as, as the body of Christ, what the mission God has for Green Hill Church. Um, and, you know, this is New Year time, and we want to really emphasize on, I think, knowing God mm -hmm. and uh, building up, you know, a lot of people set New Year's resolutions, goals, it's a, the calendar flips over, it's a good time to kind of set up uh, good habits and rhythms for your spiritual life. Right. And I know we're a couple of weeks into January, but it's still a good time to be thinking about it. For sure. Uh, and I want to ask you this a little bit, Casey, but. Uh, sometimes it's easy to say, well, I didn't really get started right away because maybe I got off to a rough start with some of my spiritual disciplines, but like you can start right now, right? Yeah, for sure. Middle of January, you can start with a good um, plan to read the Bible, to, to pray and to build some of those things, right? Yeah, for sure. There's, uh, you know, the first of the year is always a great time just to use as a reset and maybe uh, uh, come up with a good game plan for engaging God's word in 2021. But really the goal is um, at any time, we can start this uh, um, journey, and we can start engaging God's Word. Um, just the first of the year is when many people make those news, New Year resolution. Mm -hmm. They evaluate, maybe I didn't read God's Word or engage God's Word or uh, per participate in the spiritual disciplines like I'd like to in the last year, and I'm just kind of refocusing my, uh, my life and reorienting uh, my life around uh, these spiritual disciplines. So I would encourage anyone, no matter what the date you know, to just to uh, set a goal and have a plan and of how they want to engage God's word individually. Yeah. And I, I think, um, you know, every year I try to read the Bible through the year. I got a little behind in 2020, mm -hmm. even though I, I'm, you know, I really made a habit to get up early and, and read most days. Um, so I'm, I'm still catching up, right. which is okay too. Yeah. But let's talk about the importance of building those habits and rhythms, um, why it's important. I think sometimes when we think about our devotions, our quiet time, we think every morning I get up, I have to have this big halo over my head. Mm -hmm. I have to have a camp meeting moment. Right. Uh, I'm, you know, I just feel all warm inside. Sometimes we do. Yeah. But a lot of times we're just kind of getting up, stumbling up, getting our coffee and just trying to make it. Um, but it's still important. Those days are important too. M more of our days are like that than the the big moments, right? Why yeah. is it still important to, to have those habits? Yeah, I think that's uh, the key word that we want to talk about is habits. Like it's something that we want to continue to make a rhythm of our life. The reason why engaging God's word is so important, you know, uh, Lifeway did a study over these last few years and really used a data from the last 10 years um, in uh, evaluating discipleship in the church. And the number one uh, lead indicator towards uh, discipleship and uh, those that were uh, uh, growing in their faith was the way that they engage God's word. That was the number one thing that they found um, to uh, help uh, Christians mature in their faith and uh, be on this process of discipleship is a personal engagement of God's word. And so that's why we feel like it's so important for us to have a plan and to make it a habit in our uh, everyday lives, uh, a routine. Uh, you spoke just a minute ago about you know, uh, feeling like at, at times uh, you get behind in your um, uh, in, in your reading, but uh, I think it's uh, the intention of our heart that we continually uh, uh, come back to it and that we have this uh, habit. You know, uh, many people will say that it takes uh, 66 days for, for you to create a habit. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's that's just an intentionality of uh, every day is not going to be this watershed moment. Um, you know, the, not every day is 
the words just going to come alive off the page to you, but it's that uh, intentionality, that habit that you are, are creating over time that I think uh, um, God blesses and the Holy Spirit begins to illuminate the scripture more and more to you over time. Yeah, I think of that phrase, you know, in the Bible, the hiding, hiding God's words in our heart. Mm -hmm. So when we're hiding it, that means at the moment we may not understand it and see it. We may be sitting through sermon after sermon growing up or reading the Bible day after day. And in the moment, it's not, it doesn't seem useful, but it's hidden there. And right. then you can draw it out. Same with like hymns and those things. Um, when I think about habits too, um, even though I got behind and I didn't finish, when I look back at 2020, I would say probably 90% of my days started by getting up, getting my Bible and reading it, mm -hmm. which when I look back, I can be pretty grateful for that, you know, that. That, that habit and one of the things I've noticed with me and maybe you could speak to this once like I had to do everything it, it took just to make it I know I succeed when I really plan and make it as easy as I can to do that habit right so whatever I need to get whatever tools whatever things mm -hmm. knowing myself what works for me speak about that like how we can plan to fulfill that habit of, of bible reading in order that every day we just get up and it becomes a thing, right? Well, I think uh, whatever the spot is in our house or whatever, all yeah. those things, you know? Well, I think if we want to be successful, if we want to have a goal, we have to have a plan, you know, uh, we want to not happenstance, open up the Bible and just uh, um, point to a passage. And we want to have more of a plan than that. We want to, uh, it, it may be a time, uh, it may be a place. Um, and it, and then with that, you're probably going to have uh, some kind of reading plan. So I would encourage you to uh, have a time of day. A lot of people like to start their day with God's word. And I think that's a great way uh, to do it. But some people that maybe are not morning people that are not owls, they may want to do it uh, in the evening and maybe someone that uh, does it on their lunch break. It may, whatever works for you, uh, there has to be a time. Um, I, you know, for you to be successful with this, I think you need to set that time. Um, it's hard to have accountability without there being a time. So uh, setting a time and then uh, a place, a lot of times that's going to be a place that's free from distractions. I would encourage you to put away your phone. Um, uh, I, I've tried to read on my phone before, but that's too much of a distraction for me. So I would encourage you. Some people want to do it with a tablet. Some people want to do it with, you know, an actual physical copy of God's word. But uh, you want to uh, make sure that you have a place um, to do that that's free from distractions. If you have little kids, maybe it's early in the morning. Maybe it's... Um, uh, Maybe it's in a study, maybe it's downstairs uh, in the living room, maybe it's sitting next to the fireplace, maybe it's outside when it's uh, nice outside, maybe it's through prayer, prayer walking and reading God's word, but you need to have a place and then you need to have a plan like how are you going to um, daily have a strategy for how you're going to uh, engage God's word, how you're going to um, systematically open God's word and digest it on a daily basis. Yeah, and speaking of plan, and again, we want to stress that you know, the plan or the guide or the devotional or whatever is not inerrant and it's right. not the absolute authority. We're not constrained by that, mm -hmm. uh, but it's good. It's a good tool to have. I found for myself, if I have a plan that I can plug into, it, it really, I have better success. Right. So you have some tools that you brought uh, for us that are suggestions and there's a a lot of stuff out there that actually that's available, but you maybe want to show a few of the things that you've got that have helped some folks. Yeah, for sure. To plan. I would love to do that. I would say this, uh, when you're make, creating your plan, there's going to be different uh, seasons of life that those plans may look different for you. Um, it, it may be that you need to go through a really encouraging um, study. It may be that you want to do a chronological study. Maybe that you want to just center on uh, the New Testament, but uh, uh, having a plan and then mixing that up so there's some uh, variety. I'd like to just give you a couple of resources um, that I give uh, students and uh, parents as they begin their walk with uh, Christ um, that I think is useful and impactful uh, in, in my ministry. But one of the ways that you can do this, and this is something that's simple that's just come out in the last few years. This is called the uh, the uh, note takers journal, or uh, uh, CSB came out with this, this scripture notebook. And all this is is a book that has uh, it's a single book of the Bible in here, so it's easily to fit on your bookshelf. It's a single book of the Bible that's written in paragraph form, and on one side of the page is a is the text, and on the other side of the page are just sheets 
uh, blank sheets of paper with lines on them for you to be able to journal. And so uh, you would walk through this in your quiet time, you could walk through this as you are listening to your pastor go through a, a exposit, uh, expository series, and uh, it's just a good partner in engaging God's Word, and it's something that's small that can go on the bookshelf. Uh, for every book of the Bible, all 66, they uh, have a different uh, book, and it's really portable. It's something that you can slide down in your backpack. It's something that you uh, could put in your purse, uh, wherever you're going to uh, uh, read God's Word. It's just a good companion to having uh, your Bible with you, and because it has all the text with you, you don't have to worry about carrying that big Bible maybe on an airport or in your briefcase, uh, on, I mean on an airplane or in your briefcase. It could be something that you slide in at, uh, at your desk and are able to get it out at your lunch break, but it's just uh, super portable and super practical um, in. And that's the Romans this. one, right? And Correct. So we're, as a church, we're going through, uh, we're going to start preaching through Romans starting in February. Mm -hmm. And so we have these available. This is a great guide for one, when you're in church to be mm -hmm. able to take notes and have the text there. So it's yeah. a really great tool. This would be very helpful for you as you are reading ahead. Like you'll know where Daryl is at in uh, his uh, preaching calendar and being able to read ahead. And I would even encourage you this year, we're going to be walking through Romans. Um, I know this isn't in any specific plans that we're going to show today, but maybe just commit uh, to reading one chapter of Romans a day for the year. And as you uh, get through, just start over again and just continually marinate your soul in uh, Romans, because that's what we're going to be preaching out of uh, each week. And this uh, tool right here could be uh, super beneficial. Not only are you writing the notes that Daryl is giving us each week, but you're also making personal notes as the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Um, this could be really impactful. And then we got a few other things. Here. Yeah. The, uh, another one that I use a lot with uh, um, families, because... Um, this resource uh, allows us to have resources for kids uh, through adults, and you're all on the same plan together. It's called the uh, F260 series, and uh, it's put out by uh, Replicate Ministry and Robbie Gadley and uh, his team. And uh, it's, it has been very uh, impactful for the students that have been in my ministry because it takes 260 different key passages uh, in God's Word. And uh, it's not necessarily a chronological study or a, or a year long reading the Bible through in a year, but it just um, identifies 260 different um, key passages in the scripture and then walks you through it in a year's time. It's very manageable. It's not like you're trying to read five chapters a day. It's really uh, two chapters or less in most of them. And uh, each one of these uh, books is compatible uh, with an age group. And so this is a, a New Testament only, 260 passages in the New Testament only uh, that you can walk through in a year. And then uh, these other resources here are age appropriate. And so in the younger ones, there's obviously less scripture that they read, but there's also activities in there for mm. them uh, to do some dot to dot, some things to color that all uh, some crosswords, word searches that tie in directly with uh, the devotion for uh, the day. And so I like these, uh, I like to give these away, especially uh, to our um, people that are coming out of our next steps class um, and parents that are asking me about how do I engage in family devotions. I like giving these away or resourcing our parents because the 260 days uh, as an adult, I can walk through that. And my kids walking through the same time with me, the same scriptures with me, it's in a little bit, bit different way. And they, they're reading a little bit less than I am, but we're on the same path together. So when we sit down at a dinner time, you know, we're talking the same language because we're in the same uh, uh, chapters. Same thing with uh, um, kids. So this is a really good resource. Um, they have the Replicate Bible that you can use where the pages are actually in the Discipleship Bible. They have journals that you can use. Um, if you don't want to get one of these uh, books and, and do the workbook. So I think it's just a really good resource. The other thing that I like about it is it's a five-day plan as opposed to a seven-day plan. I think a lot of times in those seven-day plans, we put ourselves under so much pressure. And a lot of times there is some guilt, like, oh, I got to catch up. I got to catch up. I kind of prefer a five-day plan that yeah. gives me an opportunity to catch up when I get behind or it allows me um, if you have a weekend that's just a little crazy or something. Right. Or if I'm if something interests me or piques my interest in my reading that week, I have a day that I could, you know, investigate that a, a little bit. A little bit yeah. Right. Or if I'm kind of getting a little bit bored, like I'm in a section where I'm like, oh, I'm just really struggling. Uh, I, it gives me an opportunity to supplement that maybe with a, a different book 
or reading a Romans, maybe some supplemental reading out of a book. Um, yeah, uh, that's a great idea. I just like the five day plan a little bit better than the seven day plan, especially for uh, um, especially for Christians that are just getting started in their Bible reading, because sometimes seven days a week can feel daunting. Yeah. Yeah, it can be. And we, we need to just say, too, if you're on a Bible reading plan, you know, you're going to, because we're human beings and we're not bots mm -hmm. and robots, we're going to have days we miss. We're going to have days that you, you, it's like anything else with our eating, with our exercising, mm -hmm. that, you know, good habits mean that on most days you're doing. Right. But there's going to be days where something happens. You know, your, your kid's up on, you're up on that with your kid and you just can't do your <laughs> Bible reading that mm -hmm. next day because you're just trying to make it and get them to school or, or whatever, or, you know, a crisis happens, you know, we, this, this last year, we had a few injuries or things that come up mm -hmm. and you just, your rhythms are a little bit. And, and I know for myself, and you probably know this, the, when I'm out of habit, out of rhythm with reading my Bible prayer in the morning, it affects me. Right. And sometimes you can't help it, but you want to get right back into that. And I, I think that's really why we're doing this to, to be able to hear from God every day in the word. Uh, to get through life and most of us are very busy crazy a lot of pressures mm -hmm. everywhere it's very important well we definitely don't want to make it an obligation we want but we do want to be intentional about that a couple more hints just for uh, some of you guys that uh, maybe have been doing this for a while and maybe the plan that you have has become a little bit uh, stale there's so many resources right now for you uh, for, for our next gen families the last three weeks in our newsletter we've put out different resources of ways that you can uh, interact with your students, how you can do family devotions. Uh, we've even uh, given out a couple uh, really good uh, um, hints about some books, some new books that are out there, some new catechism stuff that you can use with your kids, the Jesus Storybook Bible, just some new resources uh, for parents to be able to help their students uh, engage God's Word. For some of you guys that maybe have read the Bible through a couple times and you're looking for a new plan, I would maybe uh, encourage you to uh, maybe try a different translation um, maybe yes. one that's uh, a little more readable, like if you've read it over the years, maybe in a new King James version or King James or uh, even CSB, I would encourage you maybe try ESV or even the uh, New Living Translation mm -hmm. is very readable. Um, so that would be uh, just a tip for you. And then maybe try one of these journaling Bibles where you can actually write some uh, notes and some thoughts down so you can look back on that and also you can pass that on to uh, generations uh, in in the future i know i have a bible uh, that my uh, my dad used and i i enjoy uh, doing my devotions out of that because i can read some of his notes uh, that uh, he had over the years um, that he's that he's been able to pass down to me which is uh, uh, makes for a That's sweet a time gift. of devotions yeah. as well yeah and i think of my dad you know the image of him getting up every morning and reading his bible mm -hmm. you know was a powerful image for me to tell me what was important to him. Um, and we, we, we should be reminded too that to, it's not that we have to read the Bible, we get to read the Bible. Right. We get to hear from God. Uh, this and, and I have found that once I've made it a habit in my life, over the course of my life, it, it actually became something I wanted to do. Right. I actually look up, I, I look forward to getting up every morning mm -hmm. and getting my coffee and getting my Bible. I, I love that time. Yeah. It can be a sweet time. I think once we do the habits, it kind of shapes our hearts to right. where we want it, right? I think it's a it's about a hunger. You know, like we didn't know we had an appetite for it until we started consuming yeah. it. And then when you start consuming it on a daily basis, mm -hmm. you're, uh, you're actually, your soul, you know, longs for it. And yeah. I think that's where all of us want to get with God's word that we just have this longing in our heart that our day's incomplete. You know, we're mal malnourished without uh, uh, feasting on God's word. Mm, that's, a, that's a great word. We want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, joining us here for Journeys with Jesus at Green Hill Church. We want you to know that if you're watching this and maybe you're not a member of Green Hill Church or someone shared this with you and you don't, you have questions about what it means to know God, that you can know uh, the God of the universe, the one who created you in his image. You can know him through Jesus Christ who died on the cross and rose again for your sins. And if you have questions about any of that, we'd love for you to talk to us. You can go to greenhillchurch.com and uh, go to the, um, the contact uh, page, the connect page, and fill that out and let us know. We'd love to get in touch with you. Um, if you enjoyed this, maybe you can share it with a neighbor or a friend or somebody who has some questions about how to get started. Uh, but most of all, we want to be here to 
to love and serve you as we walk together with Jesus. Yeah, great time today discussing this. If you have any questions about that, see us around campus. Dan and I will be around campus. Mm -hmm. Or if you're online, uh, put something in the comments like, hey, I'd love to know about some of those resources. We'll also try to put a couple of these on our website so uh, you have the links to be able to go and purchase or um, just look through some of these resources that we introduced you to today. I uh, look forward to uh, hearing this year about how you've engaged God's word and how uh, you've used these plans to succeed in your Bible reading.